Hi folks, so let's have a look at this simple problem relating to stress, strain and the factor of safety or you can call it the safety factor. So the problem reads, a bar is 500 millimeters long and is stretched to a length of 500.45 millimeters using the force or a load of 15 kilonewtons. The diametric span of the bar is given as 10 millimeters. So being tasked to calculate for the following. Calculate the amount of stress exerted on the bar and the measure of the deformation, aka the strain. If the material has remained within its elastic limit, then we need to determine what the Young's modulus is or the modulus of elasticity, if you want to call it that. And then the last problem is if the fell stress measures at 250 MPa, megapascal, calculate the measure of the safety factor. So let's give this a go. Hi folks. So let's have a look at problem number one. So we've been given a cylindrical bar. So I always tell my students, why not draw or visualize the problem? So I always do. So even though I've done it in PowerPoint as part of the problem, I always like to have to have a bit of visualizing the problem. So we've got the apply force, the apply tensile force to be 15 kilonewtons. The length, the length L is 500 millimeters. And again, it's more or less up to you if you want to convert into meters. Okay, so that'll be 0 0.5 meters, but it's more or less up to you. And then we've got the cross-sectional span, so that there, and that D is given at 10 millimeters. Okay, so let's start. So what do we know from the problem? So we know that the length L from the diagram is 500 millimeters as I stated it's up to you if you want to convert that into meters you just have to be very consistent in terms of the bay the final length so let's call the final length L subscript F and that's given at 500.45 millimeters so at least we have that we've been given a diameter so the diameter D is given at 10 millimeters. All right. So let's just work out the area, get that out of the way. So therefore, the sectional area A that's equal to pi D squared over 4. Alright, so let's call that equation one. Now again you can use area is equal to pi r squared as taught in basic math or in physics however in engineering we tend to measure things in terms of diameters if you've got a shaft you don't work out or measure the radius if you've got a vernier caliper or a micrometer you always measure the diameter right so it's always best to work in the context of diameters so we know that radius is equal to half the diameter so just a question of just substituting r is equal to d over 2 into pi r squared and that gives you pi into bracket d over 2 squared and if you expand the bracket that gives you pi d squared over 4 all right so hopefully that should eliminate any questions regarding that so the area is equal to pi 10 squared over 4. So let's bring in our handy calculator. Alright. So hopefully our calculator is in frame. So this would give us pi. So we've got pi, sorry. Shift pi times 10 squared divided by 4. And that gives us 78.5. Four millimeters squared. So we've worked out the area. So we can look at the first problem. Calculate the stress. 
and then move that into frame. So therefore, the stress, so the amount of pressure causing deformation in the bar, so sigma, and that's equal to the tensile load or the tensile force divided by the area. Okay. So we've been given the force to be 15,000 kilonewtons. So F, the force F is equal to 15 kilonewtons. So therefore, the stress sigma is equal to 15 times kilo. So that is a thousand or 10 to the power three or divided by 78.54 and we shouldn't forget the units so force is newtons and the area is millimeter squared and that will give us so I'll bring in our handy calculator so i'm just going to start with that size 15,000, and this gives 190 point about 99 Newton millimeter per millimeter squared, and then Newton per millimeter squared is the same as MPA. And MPA is megapascal, all right? So we can just rewrite that as 190.99 MPA. So we've worked out the first part of subscript problem one, I. So let's look at the next part of the problem. So I'm just going to flip that like so. Right. So we've calculated the stress, so sigma, to be at 190.99 MPA. So we've been told to calculate the strain. So the strain. And that is represented by the Greek letter epsilon. That is equal to the change in length divided by the original length. Okay, so we can call it that. All right? So the change in length, so let's go change in length delta L so delta L is equal to the final length minus the original length so if that's the case then we can write epsilon to be equal to the final length minus the original length divided by the original length so let's call that equation two like so so this is equal to 500.45 minus 500 or divided by 500 and that should give us 0 0.45 divided by 500 all right so that should give us nine per thousand. So zero point four five divided by five hundred, and that should give us yep yeah, nine times ten to the power minus four. So you can write it that way, or alternatively you can write it as so. If we add two zeros to that, so that could be nine hundred times 10 to the power minus 6 okay which is the same as 900 micron strain okay or micro strain if you want to write in that context so either way is correct so we sorted out problem 1 i so let's look at problem 1 i i Problem one, I, I've been told to calculate or determine the value of E, okay? And E is the modulus of elasticity or the elastic modulus or what is popularly known as the Young's modulus. So let's work that out. So we know that the Young's modulus E 
is equal to the ratio of the stress over the strain. So let's call that equation three, which is equal to, so we already know what the stress is. So the stress as previously calculated, we got 190.99 MPA. Okay. And we calculated the strain, so the strain epsilon to be nine times 10 to the power minus four. So we just need to just substitute these values into equation three. Give us 190, 190.99. And we shouldn't forget the mega. Okay, you shouldn't seem to make that mistake of ignoring mega. So this is 10 to the power of six, all divided by nine times 10 to the power minus four. Okay, so if we substitute and compute this information. So I'll just inverse that times 190.99, 10 to the power six. This would give us, so I'm going to write this in terms of giga. So this gives us 212.21 times 10 to the power of nine PA, all right? We shouldn't forget that strain, even though I gave it a unit, and these are more or less in specialist fields, so let's say in aerospace, that's quite typical, you know, expressing strain in micro strain. Okay, you just leave it dimensionless as done previously. All right, so there's nothing dividing that, so that's why it's still PA, which is the same as 212.21. G P A. Okay. So we've calculated the elastic modulus. So looking at the value, um, the material is more than likely to be steel. Okay, or anything that has characteristics or resilience in the two that of steel. So we calculated that bit. Now the last part, so problem I I I. We've been given some information regarding the fell limit of the material. Okay, so let me just get, just swap that, do it like so. So we've been given some information about the material. So we've been told that the fell stress, okay, so let's say the fell stress. So let's call it sigma subscript F. If the fell stress is given at 250 MPA. So let's put this in context. So we're talking about the allowable design stress. So we don't want the stress to exceed this limit. So during the working life of the components, of this particular rod. If the stress exceeds or gets close to that, then that means that it's more than likely to fail in terms of the unwanted failure that we want. So it might not necessarily break, but it could be a question of enhanced fatigue in the material or the likelihood of plastic set taking place within the material. So we can assume that. So it's probably a designer's choice to, to say that, hey, you know what? We don't want the operational stress on the component to exceed this. So that's basically what the fail stress is. So if this is the fail stress, and we've also calculated some information that uh, the present stress in the component is at 190.99 MPA, then what is the safety factor or the factor of safety? So the safety factor, I like to use safety factor, but other people probably use a factor of safety. So the safety factor, uh, small f, slash grid f, that is given as the fail limit divided by the design limit or the working limit, all right? So in this context, that'll be sigma f divided by sigma which would be equal to 250 divided by 190.99.
Okay, the units will cast an MPA, cast an MPA. So this tells us that the safety factor or the factor of safety is dimensionless. It doesn't have any units. So let's bring our trusty calculator here. So 250, 250 divided by 190.99. And that gives approximately 1.3. One. Okay. So, at least we know that the safety factor is greater than one, but it's too close to the fail limit. So, from a design context, there's probably a bit more that could be done. Maybe change the material for a material that has a higher yield limit or ultimate tensile stress. As an example, it could be changing um, some geometrical parameters regarding um, the component so it could be maybe increasing the diameter a bit to compensate for this shortfall to bring it a bit above 1.5 but again there's a whole lot that needs to be considered all right so i guess that is that and hopefully you join me in the next one when i work through problem two <laughs> Thank you.